Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Miller, and the SCP we're going to be looking at today is SCP-2102. Object Class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures SCP-2102 is to be housed at Site-122 in an L-type humanoid anomaly containment cell, HACC for short. This is to be modified to minimize the probability of injury to SCP-2102. SCP-2102 is to remain fully restrained at all times, with its hands and feet encased within padded sleeves to avoid accidental or intentional lacerations of its epidermis. SCP-2102 is to be considered a permanent Class Alpha Red security risk in light of its suicidal tendencies. In case of an unbounded ectoentropic reaction, UER for short, all on-site personnel not specifically attached to this project are to be evacuated, and three members of security staff with at least L2-2102 clearance are to enter SCP-2102 cell to initiate its breach protocol. C-2102, PRT, Breach 14, AV 1.2 for more information. Following the incident, SCP-2102 is to be treated by attached Level 3 medical staff for any burns sustained during the incident. Excess tissue is to be excised, and the resulting wounds are to be cauterized immediately. This is currently the only reliable way to reduce the amount of tissue generated. Excised tissue is to be destroyed as per the standard biohazard disposal protocol. If its breach protocol fails, all Site-122 personnel with Level 3 security clearance have been provided with the passkey to this project's kill switch. This can be activated remotely and doing so will trigger the dispersal of a dicyanoacetylene gas and powdered fluoridated aluminum within SCP-2002's containment cell. This mixture will be ignited automatically after a three-second delay. If the kill switch is not successful in deactivating SCP-2102, no further provisions have been made. Description SCP-2102 is an unidentified male of indeterminate age and descent. SCP-2102 measures approximately 178 centimeters in length and weighs an estimated 48 kilograms. 100% of SCP-2102's body is covered in hypertrophic scars as a result of the application of its breach protocol in order to halt past UER-2002 events. Due to this scarification, SCP-2102 is deaf, mute, and blind, and cannot be interviewed. All data on SCP-2102 was gathered from testing and from surviving GRU Division P documentation. SCP-2102's anomalous properties manifest when it suffers a puncture wound or laceration. Initiating an anomalous wound healing process designated a UER-2102 event. This process is instantaneous, and though both hemostatic and inflammatory phases occur as normal, the proliferative phase of the process occurs at a greatly increased rate and no wound contraction occurs. During a UER-2102 event, SCP-2102 will continue to produce new tissue at an exponential rate, unless all open wounds are successfully cauterized. Based on this, it is estimated that the culmination of an NK-class scenario would occur approximately four weeks post-event should full neutralization not be achieved. Tissue generated during UER-2102 events will expand into any available open space. Obstructions are able to delay the expansion, but as more tissue is generated, it will exert a mounting pressure on materials. Currently, there is no upper limit to the MPA SCP-2102 is able to generate. Blunt force trauma that does not break SCP-2102's epidermis will not induce its anomalous properties, and the application of intense heat will cauterize any open lacerations halting SCP-2102's anomalous wound healing. Tests have also indicated that SCP-2102's anomalous properties would in all probability not persist if all soft tissues were destroyed. Addendum 2102-A1 Notes on Recovery and Preliminary Containment SCP-2102 was recovered from the grounds of the Institute of Experimental Medicine, CSAV, in Czechoslovakia on 12-2-1972. 
Foundation agents embedded in the Czechoslovakian government had been aware of the existence of a GRU Division P project housed on the grounds of the Institute since earlier that year and intelligence reports indicated its focus to be on the development of practical applications for rapid cellular regeneration. Following the successful appropriation of classified documentation detailing SCP-2102 and its anomalous properties, a recovery operation was planned for January 1973. On 12-02-1972, at 7.14 UTC GMT, a disturbance was reported at the Institute of Experimental Medicine CSAV, and a large number of civilians were seen fleeing the premises. A small Foundation reconnaissance force, comprised of members from several mobile task forces stationed in Eastern Europe, was immediately dispatched to take stock of the situation before recovery was initiated. Preliminary containment was effected at 2301 UTC GMT on 12.02.1972 permanent containment on 12-13-1972. Addendum 2102-A2 Excerpts from Reconnaissance Log 2102, OP Rec 721202 Merrick, what is your location? On the grounds nearing the entrance to the bunker. Looks like it's wide open. No hostiles in sight. Copy that. You're cleared for approach. Good luck. Moving in. Jones, stop bumble-fucking and watch that left hallway. Jesus. Mostly labs and offices. Found what looks like a break room a while back. Most of the files are gone and what they left doesn't look important. Just paperwork on shipments, food supplies, standard logistical stuff. Take it anyway. Let IA figure it out. Any sign of the anomaly yet? Roger. Will do. No sign of the anomaly so far, but it might be on minus two or lower. Ashton, start grabbing every scrap of paper you can see. Keep your eyes peeled, Merrick. Copy that, Commander. Almost done on minus one. Still no sign of the anomaly. The smell's getting worse, though. We've located an elevator to the lower levels. We'll keep you posted. We copy, Merrick. Proceed with caution. Always. Jones, Ashton, we're going down. I want you to secure... seismic activity in this area? Not that we know of, Merrick. Why? I think I just felt something move down here. Come in. Command. Elevator's stuck. We went down maybe about a foot before we hit something. No idea what... Wait, what's that sound? Come in, Merrick. What is your status? It's something going... Something's going through. I At 1422 UTC GMT, two F-4 Phantoms dropped their payload of M-47A-1 napalm incendiary bombs, successfully cauterizing the tissue generated by SCP-2102 during its UER-2102 event in progress. 
Addendum 2102-A3 Translated excerpts from captured GRU Division P documentation. The following selected diary entries were found amongst paperwork recovered from the Institute of Experimental Medicine, CSAV. Their author could not definitively be determined. Date, 2nd of March, 1972. Finally arrived. I swear, the Tupolev was shaking more than the BMP I rode in during my service. The equipment crates were already there and mostly intact, though two chambers and a Rontgen got mashed a bit on the train, and the mainframe looks rather unwell too. I met with the local staff I kept hearing such things about, Comrade Director Chanyi. Their head of research has some genuinely compelling ideas about test subject suitability index based on basal metabolic rate, the Minsk experiments, and a couple other things, though that might have been the result of his Barak Palenka. Date, 3rd of March, 1972. Turns out our and their three-phase plugs are somewhat different. I have a headache. Date, 5th of March, 1972. Good news. Me, Mikhail, Kuzma, and their technician, Prazdanovsky, managed to swap the leads on everything and fix up the broken kit with the spares he managed to dig out from somewhere. All of it works, too. Bad news. As soon as we plugged in all of it for a test run, the fuses blew and we knocked out the power from half the institute. I would have thought they prepared things to our specification. Ugly news. Looking through their fusing diagrams, it took three of us half the day to sort it out. Whoever drew these up should be scrubbing the cellars of the Libyanka. At least we will have time to go sightseeing. There's a pretty amazing castle ruin nearby, and since Comrade Orokova's sister works there, we can go for a private tour. Still, the project stagnating for reasons this stupid leaves a bitter aftertaste. Date, 19th of April, 1972. It took a couple chats with the ONV board, the institute's director, and one angry call to Moscow. But we had the power grid strengthened in record time. Take that, Watley and Weber. In other news, they brought in a couple promising candidates today. Not ideal by far, but we'll have to work with what we have. Soon, we will see if the theories are correct. P.S. The trip was a blast. Got Marushcha a scarf she'll love too. And what's better, entire stock equals about a kilo of chewing gums. All it took was a roll of rubles to the shopkeeper. Date, 5th of May, 1972. The first subject looked promising at first. When we introduced trauma, rapid clotting took place as expected, but the process aborted soon enough and lesions developed. Turns out, Mikhail mixed in far too much neodymium. The oaf. I swear this is the last straw. I told him if he fucks up again, I will drag his ass to Moscow by his collar. Date, 28th of June, 1972. Why do they keep dying? It doesn't make sense. Reducing the amount of neodymium actually made the necrosis worse. I cannot tell Mikhail that, or I will be hearing it for the rest of my life. Date, 3rd of August, 1972. The cultivation is done, and Elena, Dr. Elena Orovkova, current whereabouts unknown, had a look at the histology. The results are interesting, almost like an equilibrium of sorts. The cells divide 50 times faster than in control samples, but they die off almost immediately too, until the whole thing chokes on its waste, so to say. It's not pretty. It seems that to make this work, we need to shift that balance somehow. Date, 15th of August, 1972. So we got another candidate, the 16th since the start of the project. I had gone to Slizzard, Dr. Slizzard Chanyi, see documentation on Operation Redemption, and told him we really needed someone more resilient than normal people. The ministry came through from what we heard. We got ourselves a counter-revolutionary who spent 15 years in a uranium mine as punishment detail, and somehow came out fine. Sure enough, histology results pointed his cells pulling a Koschi the Deathless, and his natural regeneration is about twice as fast as your average man, too. Who knows? This might be the one. Date, 5th of September, 1972. Preliminary results looking good. The wound healing process does not abort anymore, though perhaps it is completing a bit too rapidly. I cannot believe I just wrote that. <laughs> 
I wonder if we can redefine the process and perhaps even make it permanent. It was not our original goal, but if we manage this... Date, 24th of September, 1972. I'm finding it increasingly difficult to sleep. X-16 is not like the others. He's not weak. The others never lasted for more than one cycle, but X-16 has been lacerated so many times now, and each time he survives. Today he somehow freed himself from the restraints and attempted to slit his wrists. I should be happy, because it means the effect now lasts several hours longer than we expected, but I cannot help but feel bad for him. I need some time off. Maybe Slizzard will let me go see Marustia. Date, 15th of October, 1972. Finally, we have found the right composition. It turns out we needed a little more of that stabilizing agent Jurage introduced a few weeks ago. It was staring us in the face all this time. Subject X-16 is responding well, in the medical sense at least. He is as uncooperative as ever. It doesn't matter. It will be done and over soon. Another little step towards our victory. When you think of it, the man is a hero and he doesn't even know it. Date, 3rd of November, 1972. Elena showed up in my section of the lab just as I was preparing another batch of the serum. She looked distraught and practically dragged me off by the sleeve. Good reason, too. Long story short, the samples seemed to be gaining mass from nowhere. She thought it was a measurement error, but I got the same after spending the day calibrating the machines. I'm very worried. I got into an argument with Slizzard and Jurich. They say it's bound to be an error and want to press on while I and Delena want to look deeper into what the hell is happening. Date, 26th of November, 1972. There is a pattern to the increases in mass and all over, and it's not just X-16 now. I feel the answer is at my grasp. I had it all worked out yesterday, but I woke up at my desk soon after. I really need more sleep. At Marusha, I miss her, but Slizzard is not about to let me go. Date, 27th of November, 1972. We were ordered to stop working on sample analysis and focus on empirical tuning of the composition. Me and Delena appear to be the only ones with an ounce of common sense here. Just a few days more. Date, 2nd of December, 1972. It's far too early to be up, but I cannot sleep. Today is the day we either produce the very first super soldier or we start over with nothing. I really do not know which is better. Eh, tomorrow is a day too. There are no later entries in the diary. This concludes today's lecture. Thank you for listening, if indeed you still are, and you are all dismissed. Goodbye. I would like to give a special thank you to Alatreon, Zargaran, Professor Puffer, Ritalius, JK, Signar, your local foundation agent, Derivative, Gabriel Hawkins, Nate the Clown, Lost Boy, A Real American Hebrew, Sio Dio Demnatus, Eric Corbage, Longinus, Karim El Ashmoui, James Saba, and NJ Vojak. If you would like a special thank you at the end of each of my videos, and some other cool stuff as well, visit patreon.com forward slash thevulgan. Thank you.